Hi everyone. Um, thank you so much um, for attending this virtual talk. I'm going to make a start now. Can you give me a shout if you can't see the PowerPoint? Um, should be here. So I'm going to I'm going to make a start, I think. So welcome to um, my talk. It's called From Let Go to Leadership. Um, the beginning of my journey. So that bit's very important because I am still very much at the beginning of my journey, but I'm going to talk through a bit what I've learned so far. Um, so a bit about me. So outside of tech, uh, this is me here. Um, I'm a surfer uh, in England. It's always a bit chilly, but wetsuit technology is pretty good. Uh, plant mum, so I have so many plants. And um, I'm a creative thinker and doer. So that's kind of an umbrella of, I do a lot of creative things. I do painting, illustrations, love DIY. Um, so a bit of a creative person. Um, inside, inside of tech, uh, tech related. So what I currently do is I'm a junior software engineer and I also manage a team of fantastic um, apprentices and interns at Kavea Digital. I'm going to talk to you a bit about how I got to this position and um, what I learned along the way. I also do leads front end. I'm a, a co-host and co-organizer co when we're not in lockdown, so we haven't done any virtual talks. Um, we prefer physical ones and that's just not possible at the moment. I'm also a tech panelist and speaker, so I've been on a tech panel before and I have a couple more coming up. And this is my second talk. Um, this is really exciting. And um, another thing is I am on the leadership and management apprenticeship at Calderdale College. So I recently started that. I'm not too far into that. I think maybe six months. Um, I will speak a bit more about, about that later on in the talk. I've been surrounded by tech for nine years, including like college, uni, etc. And I have a computing degree. I also have a blog as well, which is techuray.com, as you can see in the top left. Um, so if you're interested in looking at that, go for it. Cool. So what are you going to get out of this talk? So the whole point of this talk was not just to talk about me, because um, as a typical British person, I just don't like doing that. <laughs> but hopefully you're going to get some good stuff out of here. So managing your tech expectations. Pretty impressed that I came up with that. It's probably out there, obviously, but um, managing your expectations. So if you went to uni or if you're studying um, learning to code, anything, learning anything, I want to explain the shock of doing a computing course at university and then going into industry. It's not kind of a, a smooth road into that. Um, dealing with failure, uh, how how being let go from a junior role because of lack of experience affected me and what I did to overcome that. I want to talk about interview tips. So I've been on both sides, an interviewer and an interviewee, um, and what to look out for uh, from a company like red, red flags and whatnot. And then finally, uh, personal development and career tips. So how to be the best version of yourself. I've picked a lot of things up so far on my leadership course I'm doing at the moment, as well as um, bits and bobs that I've learned from interviews and from starting my career at Kavea. So do we have anyone here who would class themselves as impatient? I was impatient. Yeah, I'm eager, driven, passionate, and by 24, I expected to be a great developer, probably mid to senior with all the experience under my belt. My goal was to have um, a fancy car and a sweet paycheck by 24. I'm going to talk about my journey and we'll see whether I achieve these goals. So let me give you some background. High school. Um, at high school, I was bullied and I built defensive walls. School's a vicious place, I think. Um, it really teaches you a lot. I wasn't an A grade student. You could say that I really just didn't like secondary school. Um, I was really into music, so that was kind of the start of my little budding music career at the time. Um, and leading on from this, I ended up going to college because I didn't want to go to sixth form and stay there any longer. I don't know if anyone else has had 
trauma from from school school days or if they were your best years who knows it's always different so i went to college now i bet you're interested to why we've got this <laughs> this photo here um i had no idea what i wanted to do not at all so i knew my grandparents were involved in technical stuff but I, I didn't know what they did really i remember i tried to build a html site for my music um and my granddad tried to explain seo which is search engine optimization and i, I just had no idea what was going on so i was flicking through the prospectus and i ended up doing software it software development as a b-tech because i thought it sounded really cool i thought it would help me build a website um and finally understand what my granddad was talking about i ended up loving it absolutely loving it i ended up having like the second highest marks in the class uh, in the year sorry and i was heavily encouraged to go to university so from the lows of high school this this ended up on a, a pretty good high so this brings me on to university i don't want to sound like a millennial student but it wasn't an easy ride for me i i thought so i just finished college i was on a pretty good high uh the first year was great second year uni life setting now, i don't know if if any of you have gone to uni maybe you have maybe you haven't um it doesn't matter whether you have or not but you'll probably know how hard university students party um and just get swept up in becoming like a semi-adult so third year of uni life setting really hard and i was going out partying way more than i could handle and i actually entered a slump of depression and I ended up failing my third year. So going back to those goals at the beginning, um, how would I be a top developer at 24? How would I get my nice house, my fancy car with all this debt and then actually no degree? I was given three options. So the first option was I could just give up and fail. Um, I could just leave and have a lot of debt. Second option was I could retake the module with no extra debt, cool but I was capped at 40%, which is just a pass, ultimately, meaning my other modules of work, which also affected by my depression, it wouldn't put me on a good footing overall. Third option was I could redo the whole year and pay another year's fees. Ouch. I ended up doing um, really well in that year long one module, uh, which took me to a two one. So everything that went on above, I came out in pretty good shape. So <laughs> remember these crazy, ridiculous goals I had before? I graduated at 23. So why am I telling you this? This is reality versus expectations. And this is where my expectations versus reality really hit. For me, university created a platform of unrealistic expectations. So tech moves really quick. And how does that relate to uni? Well. Fundamentals generally remain the same, but so much had changed since has changed now since I was at university as a junior software engineer. Now I'm learning in the same frequency as I as I did at university. Um, and then that took me on to my first developer job after this. So after I'd realized uh, this is when I realized that actually there's a lot to learn still. Tech does not stagnate. If you're if you're wanting to get into tech, and you just want to learn something and then sit and do that for a couple of years, then tech's not the place, but it's so enriching for knowledge and learning. So this took me onto my first job straight after university. It was a really small, uh, small telecoms company. I absolutely loved it because it was my first proper job. Um, but I, I ended up outgrowing it because it was so small. My IT director who was fantastic he was my senior my mentor um and so i ended up staying there a year and a bit and then i after that i went to a kind of a non-dev role now this role was an application support and deployment engineer um but i kind of missed coding you know i'd done coding for the first year that's what i wanted to do my course was a complete umbrella of topics um and i really i really enjoyed co coding so i kind of said right i'm gonna go and find a coding job but I chose the wrong job. Um, so while I was at this non-technical job, I ended up getting
getting really involved with Leeds tech community because I I really just wanted to find a way back in. I was thinking maybe I could do this job because I did enjoy it. It was a really cool job, um, but I really wanted to do coding stuff and I wanted to be, in, uh, you know, surrounded by coders. Maybe I could do it on my weekends and evenings. Um, so I joined Code First Girls as a voluntary instructor. Uh, so I taught my class like uh, HTML, CSS and Bootstrap specifically. I also ended up joining, um, taking over Leeds front end meetup with a friend because the previous um, organizer of that had his own business and it, it was too much to kind of take on. So we restarted that. Um, and then also I joined a community called Junior Hub. So this is great for any other juniors. It's a community on Slack and it, we have about, uh, I think it's like 300 junior developers nationwide. There's a few seniors and mids and it's, basically a friendly slack uh, slack no it's a friendly stack overflow um so that was set up by my friend who i run um leads front end with and it's fantastic to to network so oh let's not skip ahead <laughs> so this time i want to get back into coding um and i wanted to i was like right i i need a job i need a job in coding i want to do the coding um so what did I do? I jumped straight into a job and I learned a lot here. It was a mistake. So the first interview tip that I learned was remember that you're interviewing them as much as they are you. It's often forgotten that you're actually there to suss them out as well as them to suss you out. I know it's really it can be really challenging you know you've got to will they like me will they bring a whiteboard out and test me in that interview um will i be able to find the place um how do i not be awkward when asking for a cup of tea or something like that you've got so many things going through your head maybe you don't have all of those but <laughs> maybe some of them um then you just got to remember that actually it interviews work both ways um are they do they have the right vision um that matches your vision your values what's their mission what are the people like I'm going to get on to that a little bit later. Second interview tip, if your gut is telling you no, listen to it. These are where the kind of the red flags pop up. So um, if your gut's telling you no, don't go for the job, even though you really want to get into coding and this is your only maybe your only opportunity or your only interview and you're still not getting a good vibe, don't jump at it. Third, if the company messes you around in the beginning with no explanation, run. What do I mean by this? So it's your company that you're, you're interviewing, right? You, you get an okay vibe, you're not sure, um, but they say, oh, sorry, you don't have the, the job, um, you're not suitable for the role. And then you get a message from another person in the company saying, oh, we're actually just post postponing the role, or maybe they haven't got in, in contact with you. Um, they said, oh, you can have the job, but actually, the complete radio silence until you start. You just got to see how the company treats you, see how they have the processes in place. Um, if they don't, then, and you're not getting a good vibe from it, honestly, run. So I lasted two months at a company, uh, this wrong this wrong place for me. When I got pulled into the office and I, I came back from my pre-booked holiday to say, we're just not working out. So firstly, I thought it was a joke. Secondly, it wasn't a joke. Thirdly, I should have listened to my gut. So let me just give you some background. Why didn't this job work out? So I was going for a junior um, developer job and I wanted to do PHP, which is a back end language. Um, and they, they were like, yeah, because I'd done that in my previous place. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you can do that, but you have to be a designer. Uh, UX, UI, you know, user interface, user ex experience and rebuild the system on CSS. But then after you can be, um, you can do back end stuff really. But I didn't realise this until a few weeks into my new job, not at the interview. <laughs> so another interview tip, a developer's role can differ a huge amount between companies. Get them to tell you exactly what a day as a developer looks like and if there are any other developers in the company speak to them now this doesn't really this isn't just for developers if i'm honest see what your role looks like ask if you can go in for half a day 
for free or whatever um ask if you can speak to people um you know the other developers in the company because nine times out of ten you're going to be hired by a lead potentially a lead tech person and a recruitment recruiter person do they have real insight into the day-to-day -day job that you're going to be doing who knows speak to the, the the role that you want to be there speak to those to find out so i'm going to talk a bit about feelings of uh, my feelings of being let go from a junior role because i didn't have enough experience um so after studying for a particular role at college and university going in as a junior not having enough experience in the umbrella of things that they wanted um only after only realizing this into the job what like it felt like a punch in the face like what could i do now do i have to go back to university do i have to do another course do, like do i have to do a boot camp it was really an unsure um situation it was a really unsure time so what I did is I took a week I said right I'm going to take a week I'm going to decide what I really want to do do I really want to do PHP do I really want to work for a small company do I want to work for a big company I updated my CV a little bit as it was recently updated um, I decided to play around with JavaScript and React because it was bubbling in the community and obviously I've been running leads front end and JavaScript React was a huge deal and was coming and after after talks with um other people uh, mentors other people in the community i really wanted to work with people um i thought that was a, a strength of mine at the time so what did i do i approached a uh, one of our sponsors a leads front end and let them know um they were a recruitment company and sandra who was the, re uh, the recruiter she said i know a fantastic company and i'm telling you about this not because i know you not just to get a recruitment point so I was like, right, I'm not jumping in again. What I'll do is I'll have an interview at a couple of places, not just one, get the vibe, um, figure out what I want to do after being let go, and then I'll, I'll you know, go for it, depending on how the interviews um, go. So using those interview tips that I'd learned before, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew exactly what I wanted from a company, and the biggest thing for me was vision. So what's the vision? I knew being a developer or an engineer could be a role of coding, but what was the business doing? More importantly, how did they treat their people through vision? I'm a huge people person. You know, why should I work here? Will I fit in here? Does this role fit me? And what does my gut say? This is the whole interview tip around your interviewing them as much as they are you. What really, what really matters to you and do, do they have that? So I, my gut was screaming, this is awesome for when I joined Kavea and I listened to it. Um, I joined Kavea Insurance uh, nearly a year ago, actually, which is pretty awesome. So a little bit about Kavea, who are Kavea? So Kavea Insurance uh, is a huge insurer originally in France. They insure one in every uh, four people over there. And they grew uh, to the UK, bought a few small insurers across the country, and they are insurance underwriters for some massive companies. Uh, such as John Lewis, RSPCA, RSE um, and more. And they're also known by their own brand of Provident Insurance. So when I joined Kavea, the tech department had come out of the other side of a huge digital transformation, which was, you know, this was an amazing opportunity to grow with the business, especially as Kavea has a fantastic learning and development team. So this takes me on to some career tips. Number one, oh, this is career, Kavea Digital. But the career tips. <laughs> Number one, get a mentor. Right. So I got a mentor as soon as I started at Covey Digital, um, which, by the way, is the same as Covey Insurance. But we have a huge digital uh, presence and a huge digital um, side of the business. So when I joined Covey Digital, I, yeah, I got a mentor. And for you to get a mentor, you can find them online. Twitter is a huge community. Uh, get on there, find a mentor. There's loads of different uh, initiatives. Uh, libraries do them, and other community groups do them too. Reach out in your network. Don't and, and just don't pay for a service. Yeah? You don't pay for mentors. Um, having a mentor is a great way to establish and achieve your career goals. It helps identify gaps in your knowledge, and your mentor has a wealth of knowledge and experience, which can guide your own decisions, as well as preparing you to be a mentor. So there's so many benefits to doing this. Um, 
so when I started, my mentor said to me, what do you really want to do? So for those who may recognize this or may not, this is a SWOT analysis. So what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities and what are your threats? So for me, I was like, well, I love the people side of tech. Eventually I want to manage and lead. Um, and a, a few months down the line, I was I was pushing for that and I was given the opportunity to manage at the time for apprentices and interns as their manager had moved on to a bigger squad. Again, it was a great opportunity because they were going through a big uh, tech transformation. And honestly, it's an incredible feeling watching people grow, especially so early in their career. Um, I felt being so close to their experience, I could share my um, learnings with them and, and can, uh, which is fantastic. So analyze going on to analyzing your weaknesses. So I know I'm a quite passionate per person and I'm also quite an emotional person. So how can I use this as an opportunity to be a strength? Well, um, it gives me a good footing to have emotional intelligence, one of the, the you know the key qualities of, of leadership. Um, and that really works towards my goal of leading. Um, and the threats, so my threat personally was, will I be taken seriously as a, a junior developer? You know, it's a challenge. Um, what can I do to remove this or improve this situation? And then what opportunities do you have um, in the workplace? Do you have any learning opportunities? Uh, do you have any one-to-ones um, -one's coming up that you can ask for different, you know, more experience in something? Um, so if you haven't done a SWOT analysis, I'd highly recommend you look into it. Um, it's literally just called a SWOT analysis. So I just want to talk about my little team, uh, which are a team of five now. So <laughs> really cool stuff that we've done is um, we re we didn't recently, actually, it was earlier in the year, earlier last year. We went to our high school and taught year seven, all of year seven to work in agile teams. Um, by using Vernie the robot. Now this robot actually takes about three hours to build and the apprentices built, I think it was about five, four or five of them. What we did was we split the year seven up into groups of I think it was about four or five and we did it in Agile. So we as Kaveya and the teachers were stakeholders. We had the product owners um, who came to us and said, look, the stakeholders want us to do a figure of eight around some co cones. You have the scrum master in the team doing a bit of organizing, getting the group together. You had developers who would code, as you can see on the bottom uh, right. It was drag and drop, but brilliant for your sevens. You also, we also had designers, so the printers didn't fully build the Lego robot. They left the head out, et cetera, and there were some other bits. Um, and designers kind of rebuilt the robot, rebuilt the accessories, because it can play golf, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we had a tester, the fun part, which, you know, make sure the robot worked. So that's what that's what one of the projects that we've done um, as a as a group. So as you can see, it's it's very fun. <laughs> um, so as you can see, I had this opportunity of um, leading and managing these wonderful people, but I had no experience. I was a junior developer, as you all know, because I've just told you my story. So what did I do? Um, I got a coach. Now, during this time, they are matching me up with a coach within the business. Um, so they were a technical coach, they were like a business side coach. And by the way, if you don't know the difference between a coach and a mentor, is a coach helps you find the solutions by asking the questions. So it comes from you, whereas a mentor gives you advice. And another thing I was uh, I was told, uh, taught by my coach was coach versus counsellor. A coach um, talks about the things in the future, uh, the problems coming up. How are you going to get to those solutions? Whereas a counsellor focuses on the things in the past. One of my goals was to get more experience as a manager and leader. So you guys need to, if you want to progress or reach out for a mentor, for a coach, I would highly recommend doing it. Um, it's, it's really beneficial for your self-development and for your career. And yeah, for you as a person, it's, I think it's really important. I've learned so much, not just technical wise. And this takes me to where I am now. So we have a fab a learning and development department. So I was really fortunate um, that we that um, Kavea had created this um, course with Calderdale College, along with a load of other businesses in Calderdale to create an inspiring leaders course. So this is suited for leaders within Calderdale who have management responsibility, but little to no experience. 
the opportunity arose at Kabir to do this course and it aligned perfectly to my goals and ambitions, both in the company and personally. So alongside two others, I jumped at the chance to do the course, which I'm currently doing. So it's an ILM level three accredited qualification. So a, a leadership and management qualification. So not only does this mean that I'm going to be equipped with the knowledge to lead and give back to Kavea, but I'll get a qualification too. Um, and this leadership course is 18 months and I will tell you a bit about what I'm studying, but I really think it's helpful to your career and your personal development if you speak to, if, you're, if your company has a learning development um, department, just see what, what's out there. You know, uh, a lot of companies have to uh, give and be involved with apprenticeships. So what can what can they do for you and what can you give back to them in result of um, growing in your knowledge and your experience? So my leadership course, oh, I've just said that, it's 18 months. And um, what I'll be doing is, is key things for leadership. So building relationships, leading people naturally, uh, decision making. That's that's a really good one because it's one of those things that you have to do every single day. Um, about the smallest things to the biggest things, it's really interesting to kind of get behind what's going on with decision making in your own brain. Problem solving. Uh, this is not all I'm doing. I'm doing some more stuff. And also that chart is not accurate. It just looks nice. So final career tip, kind of what I was saying before, but ask what learning opportunities there are for you. What can your company do for you? Because at the end of the day, the, the more they better you, the more that you are able to bring for them. It works both ways. Um, and it's just... I think it's detrimental to your personal development. Um, so if you like, if you're in tech and you don't like learning, then you're in the wrong place. But if you like tech, you like learning. This should be um, a really exciting thing for you for you to do. So yeah, I hope you all got um, some good stuff from this and um, pick up some of the the things that I've picked up along the way too. And I really hope it helps you. If you wanna link in with me, uh, that's my name. Twitter is Techie Ray, and if you want to find out about the cool stuff we're doing at Kavea, um, look at the Kavea Digital hashtag or our account now. Um, but yeah, thank you so much um, for attending this this e talk. All right, thanks for that, Rachel. I'm going to jump in and just give you a hand with Q and A. Um, <laughs> So um, there's a couple of ways you can ask questions for anyone who is wanting to find out more. You can um, just shout out, get yourself off mute um, and just speak up. Or we do have the chat function so you can type your questions into there and we'll pick them up from there. Um, so yeah, take it away if you've got any questions. <laughs> um if anyone has any questions like later on um after this then feel free to like message me or anything like that oh excellent let's have a look at this so any advice if your company is small and doesn't have a training budget yet and oh, that's really interesting um i think what's important for what I would find important would be um, training time. If they can't allocate maybe uh, money for a course, there's loads of free resources um, online. Can they spare you half a day every two weeks to, to do this training? So that's one way to look at it. Um, are they allowing you the time if they don't have the budget? Um, that's probably what I'd suggest for that one. What's your favorite programming language? Oh my goodness me. Um, I kind of, I think I'm gonna have to say JavaScript. Just, I mean, originally it was PHP because I did that first. So I always think like, I've seen so everywhere, uh, people are like, whatever your favorite language is, is the one that you did first. And it would be PHP, but um, I really like JavaScript because it's so versatile. And now uh, when I was learning PHP, JavaScript did not do the stuff that it does now, like with React and Node. Um, <laughs> but I, it is very versatile. So I would say JavaScript on that one. Awesome. Uh, okay, apart from Twitter, do you know any places to find a mentor? 
Um, are you on LinkedIn? Because if you're on LinkedIn, there's um, good mentorship um, places there. Otherwise, um, I would get in touch with anyone in your network. So your bosses um, and people like that, they might be able to recommend you some people. Um, so I would suggest either LinkedIn if you don't have Twitter or asking around. Okay, training times. Oh, yes. Yeah, training time is really good, um, really important that you squeeze that in um, and have that regular and just, you know, say, look, if I learn this, it's a great business case for you. So why not? Um, Paul, when you are hiring new developers, what do you look for? OK, so um, I sat in on a few interviews with developers. They were junior developers um, to get develop, uh, to get interview experience. So when I was in there. I had my questions such as um, what are they like as a person? That was really important to me. Soft skills can't be taught. Development skills definitely can be taught. Um, you know, are they really, you know, are they wanting to, to throw new ideas at, at your company or you? Um, are they wanting to make things better, new ways of working? Um, are they wanting to learn? That's just so important. Like if they're not willing to learn, then we don't really, you know, you don't want to, why are you a developer if you don't want to learn? So I'd, I'd definitely look out what they're like as a person. What do they do in the spare time? What are their hobbies? My favourite question to ask in interviews would be, um, if you were a crayon in a crayon box, what colour would you be? And this, there is definitely not a wrong answer to this, um, but someone I was speaking to not too long ago gave me like the best answer ever um, and really backed up why she, why she would be that colour and I thought it was fantastic. It's just really fun um, and culture kind of based. Uh, what are my hobbies? So I mentioned earlier I go surfing so as I also mentioned it's very cold um, but wetsuit technology is fab. <laughs> I also do drawing, illustrating, uh, painting. At the moment I'm doing like a ton of DIY so I made a planter out of wood and um, that was fun I mean it's not perfect definitely not perfect but it's really fun so yeah they're my hobbies <laughs> gosh I feel like I've just chatted on is there any other questions <laughs> no I think there's one I think someone's typing so Sorry. maybe oh, okay give it a sec cool New message. Oh no, it's not the right mouse. Great job. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank everyone to co uh, you know for coming here today. This is my second talk, and I kind of love talking or helping people. So I guess it's it's a nice little mix. Um, but I really hope everyone got got something out of today. That was the main thing. Thanks. <laughs>